I might have gone a little crazy on the haze. Holy crap. Yeah, no, I went too heavy. I, uh, I went too heavy on the haze. But anyway, welcome back to the classroom. It's been a little while. I've been so busy on a project that has been ongoing for a, quite some time now. But I am truly excited to show you. So just hold out a little bit longer and I apologize for missing a few weeks here and there. I'm gonna get back on a consistent schedule shortly. But this video, this particular video is covering something that we like to call RGB lighting. How to light a scene with RGB, a couple tips and tricks here and there, camera settings, so on and so forth. So we are diving in to another great video. But before we move any further, please make great friends with this button down here called Mr. Subscribe or the like button, the share button, whichever of the three you please. So working with RGB lighting, you've got a ton of different combinations, all with colors made out of the color wheel, which is the full color spectrum of red, green, blue, purple, yellow, so on and so forth, as you can see on the screen now. So not all of those we are going to cover in this video, but some of them being complimentary, triad we might touch on, analogous, all of these color combinations that make a great image. So before we even dive into any lighting whatsoever, we're gonna talk about camera settings, which is probably one of the most frequently asked questions I get, which is white balance. What do you set your white balance to when you don't have a Kelvin color temperature of your lights to really crutch on and go back and forth with? What I typically do is set my camera's white balance to 5600, which is daylight, which is what we're pretty much used to as true white. So putting it this way, when your camera white balance is set to true white at daylight at 5600, your colors are going to be received on the sensor as they are most naturally received by us humans with our human eyes. So I set my camera's white balance always to about 5600 as a great starting point. Sometimes if I want cooler tones, I'll shift down towards 5,000 or 4,500. If I want a little bit warmer tones, I'll shift up to about six or 6,500. But my middle ground is sitting right around 5,600 Kelvin as far as my camera settings go. Now environments where you're going to see RGB lighting. Now there aren't any cookie cutter circumstances to where you're gonna use RGB lighting, but a lot of the times you'll see it, especially in like music videos, club scenes, uh, more like nightlife because nightlife will have a lot more influence and motivation by colored lighting. During the day, you're so used to seeing the sun being warm, the sky being blue, and a lot of these natural warm and cool tones. But when it gets to the nightlife after dark, I like to think that RGB lighting is a little bit more fit. You really see it in a whole variety of circumstances, so there's not just one use for RGB lighting. Watch it, my MC's gonna fall, there it goes. It happens. But diving in to this lesson particularly, now what we are looking at here is something along the lines of an analogous color combination. Explained a little bit better, looking at the color wheel, all of your colors in your scene are kind of settling on one corner of the color wheel. So we've got some pinks and some blues and those kind of all sit on this cooler magenta corner of the color spectrum. So that's a great example of analogous colors. So analogous colors being the colors on the same side of the spectrum, you can do it in different ways. You can have our key light be maybe something of like an orange and our background light, something of like a green. So these again, look pretty nice as a combination of colors because they're again, sitting in that green, orange region of this color wheel. But another one and another combination that is probably the most frequently noticed and used in Hollywood and film and photography and art in general is something called complementary colors, which the most common one you're gonna see is most likely a blue and an orange. So blue and orange are what are called complementary colors. And looking at the color wheel, the best way to describe complementary colors is directly across from each other. So on one end of the spectrum, you have blue and directly across the color wheel, you will have orange. And blue and orange feels the most natural to us and is probably the most used in Hollywood and film in general because it is just so natural. We're so used to seeing the sun being a very warm source in the sky contrasted by the cool blue sky or the cool night tones. It's a very commonly seen and natural color contrast for us, but that is not the only option as far as complementary colors go. Another one that is probably my personal favorite 
is, let's see, let's turn the MCs to this like fluorescent look. And then the key light, let's go into the gels over here. And I'm gonna use a high sodium gel, which is a nice amber color. So the 600 series and high sodium. And then this is probably my favorite combination of complementary colors. One, because I feel blue and orange is very overused for a good reason, it looks fantastic, but I love this more amber and fluorescent kind of cyan look. It just has this really nice contrast in my opinion. So I always will resort with my blues more towards that cyan side and my warms more towards that amber side. It just has a really great look. So I do wanna take a second to talk about the RGB light sources that I'm actually using in this video. And the key light, I have an Aperture Nova just because it's a beautifully soft light as itself, but you have all of these options, especially inside this link of gels, uh, HSI, CCT, all these different effects and so on and so forth. So it makes RGB lighting very, very easy. And up here in our background, I've got a bank of Aperture MCs. And since they have magnets on the back, I just took little metal pieces, I gaff taped them to the wall, brought them up here, slapped it on, and it makes it super easy, especially sitting here with Sidus Link, I can adjust everything via Sidus Link. Now, not all of us have access to RGB light sources like this, especially as a first light. I know for myself, RGB lights just don't have as much output as a typical daylight source would. So having an RGB light as your first light is probably not the best idea. For myself, my first light was an Aperture 120D and that's just a daylight source. So actually I'm gonna grab something, be right back. Roscoe Color Gels. These were an absolute lifesaver when I only had a daylight source. Looking at them, I'm not sure if you've seen them in videos before. Some of them are in rougher shape than others, but you've got all of these different colors to where I would just clip them on the front of my 120D or the 120D softbox. It has a clip or a magnetic clip that goes in the Bowens mount inside the softbox to where you can just clip gels in front of your daylight source. So getting RGB looks using things like gels are an easy solution for just working with a daylight source. And one thing that is phenomenal about the Nova especially is that inside this link, you have a selection of Roscoe gels exactly like this. So that's the color effects kit. I bet you it's got something along the lines of that. Yeah, so you've got the red, you've got all of these different options, the yellow, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Doesn't look that bad. Like you would in this gel pack it there. But if you don't have any RGB lights, gels on the front of your daylight source is an excellent alternative. Okay, so with that said, we've talked about analogous colors, we've talked about complementary colors. What other options are there? One of the big ones is monochromatic. And monochromatic, you may hear from black and white, but that's really meaning one color. So if we wanted to go for a monochromatic scene here, what are you picking? Blue, green, red, green, I like it. Perfect, so let's go over, pick a nice green over here, match that with the MCs as well. And now we're looking at a one color scene. Now, the one thing with monochromatic scenes is, that I have found personally is that the eye of the viewer will tend to adjust if there is just one color. It'll kind of change to it. So if you're starting to look at me, you may notice that it's starting to look a little bit desaturated or you don't notice that really strong green feeling that you did before. And that's because your eyes are starting to adjust to that because they don't have a reference color, like let's say a red over here. Now I look very green, but if you go back to here on that background light, you're gonna again start to adjust to just being this kind of gray desaturated look. So one thing I've found not always, but with monochromatic scenes is that if you don't have a reference color, or a contrasting color or something to keep everything, I guess, balanced, if you wanna put that poorly, you start to get this grayish desaturated look. That's why I always like to have some sort of contrast with, let's see, what do we have here? Green, let's go for red, because that's a complementary color. But it looks very Christmassy. 
because that's why Christmas is so great. I guess I should probably fix this now. So let's go back to a, that looks a little bit better. This is my favorite, I love it. It's just something about like fluorescent against this sodium vapor look that just makes my heart warm. So I put together this video on a whim, one because I'm just incredibly busy and I've been also shooting with RGB lighting all week and all month really, and I've been absolutely loving it. So I know that I've been getting a lot of questions as far as camera settings, color contrast, things like that. So I thought it would be a great video to put out this week to touch on that. And I wanna talk about my scene for a minute just to talk about what I've got going on because a lot of you are always curious of my talking head. Back here, I've just got those MCs like I've been telling you. I've got the Nova with a softbox that you can kind of see here and a grid over that. Just because you can see you're getting this crazy amount of spill all in the background without the grid and then you don't have that fluorescent backlighting contrast look. So I took the grid, I put that on there. Bam, very sloppy job, but you get the idea. And then over here, I've just got the MCs. I've got one MC on a C stand as a fill light down, or a rim light, I'm sorry, down here, little hair light up there. Over here, I've just got a white bounce card reflecting off this grid, just because without it, you can see I'm very much in the shadow. And then I bring that back in and it brings a little bit more fill onto my far side. One, because I'm working in a basement and there's no lighting right here. And two, just because I wanted a nice roll off. So that about wraps up this week's video. I do hope that you guys found it very helpful. And if so, please hit that like and subscribe button and i will see you next week so thank you all very much have a great week light something with rgb tag brady's classroom on instagram whatever it is that you post on and i will see you next time see you later